So it's Good Friday, and we're so grateful to you for walking with us through Holy Week. This is the day that we remember the day that Jesus was crucified. And um, somewhere around 12 o'clock in the afternoon, the world went dark, and mm. three o'clock in the afternoon, the veil was torn, and that final barrier between us and the Holy of Holies was laid bare. It's a glorious, glorious freedom that we've gotten. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. We're This whole time, this whole week, we have been talking about this prophetic word that we received from a friend of ours on the West Coast, that God, in this season, wants us to... Uh, turn homes into sanctuaries, to turn tables into altars, and to prepare us for freedom from slavery in Egypt. It's Passover week, it's Holy Week, we're stoking the home fires. Chris? When my heart is overwhelmed And I cannot hear your voice I hold on to what is true Though I cannot see It's the storms of life that come And the road ahead gets steep I will lift these hands in faith And I will believe And I'll remind myself And I'll remind myself of all that you've done So grateful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your incarnate life, mm -hmm. for your death, and for your resurrection. We bless you and we thank you. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We're going to go from that really lovely time of worship to a story about a tarantula. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> because if you've never seen a tarantula lose its skin, you are missing out. And I'm going to read this because I don't want you to miss a drop of it. Mm. It's one of the coolest things I've discovered in nature. I read the story of this guy who, the first time his pet tarantula shed its skin, 
he thought it was dead, actually. He woke up one morning to find the tarantula flat on its, bag, little, uh, on its back, little feet sticking up in the air, air. It looked just like textbook dead. So he thought, he'd, you know, he couldn't figure it out. He, he fed this spider frequently. He gave it water. What else does the spider need? About mid-morning, he came back to his aquarium, and he found out, he, he saw it, that this, this spider's body, his head and its body had popped open like a, like a, uh, like a submarine top. This isn't bothering you yet, is it? <laughs> oh, <That was> strange. <laughs> that's when he decided to go online to find out what was going on. And that what he discovered is, was this. Before a tarantula sheds his skin, he turns himself over onto his back. He appears to be dead. The blood leaves the outer layer of the skin and pulses through his body. And it is the blood that pushes the old dead skin away from him. And eventually... He will crawl out of his old dead skin just like a, like a diver would come out of his wetsuit. Thanks. I mean, that's the coolest thing ever, isn't it? And here's the coolest part. When a tarantula sheds, he sheds every part of his old self, including his fangs. Now, there are so many sermons in this, I don't even know where to begin. But I hope you hear the Easter in it. It begins with Christ laying his life down, looking for all the world like dead while he sheds the limits of human life and then is resurrected, even saying to Mary early that Easter morning, don't touch me, I'm still a little tender. <laughs> Isn't that just beautiful? And then, of course, the story extends to us. Because Jesus conquered death and sin for all time, we are invited to join him through his death on a cross. Our sins are forgiven, and when we trust him to take over our lives, we go through an, another a sort of death. We find ourselves like, as Paul said, the old has passed away, behold, the new has come. Here's the coolest part to me about the whole tarantula story. A tarantula doesn't just shed their skin once in a lifetime. Actually, they shed their skin a couple of times a year. And I'm thinking about just how much like a life with Jesus that is, hmm. right? Because even after we've shed the spiritually dead skin of our old life, we still find that beneath it there are these other layers. I just love the way Paul says it when he says it to the Corinthians. The, the old has passed away, but the new is coming. Hmm. Maybe there's room for in that translation for layers. You know, I, I have come into this new life with Christ, but every day, every day I'm being sanctified. Hmm. Every day I'm... I'm uh, finding new layers. Every day I am shedding the old. So mm. I'm thinking about a couple of things. And, and first I'm thinking about that hibernation phase. The, the hibernation we've all been in for weeks now and the hibernation ahead of us. And about our friend, Dr. Ricky Moore, who prophesied that God was preparing us for freedom from our Egypt. It is mm. for freedom Christ has set you free. Amen. So how will you use this downtime? this hibernation season, to gain victory over things that have no place in resurrection life. Hmm. You think about that tarantula the, using the blood to actually pulse through his body and push the old away. Hmm. How will you use the life of Christ, the life is in the blood, to push the old life away? Hmm. And the second thing I'm thinking about is the hibernation Jesus went through in those days between the cross and the resurrection. Here we are on Good Friday and Sunday. We will, we will celebrate the resurrection, but I don't want to run too quickly by Saturday. Mm. You know, we don't talk too much about the Saturday between Good Friday and Easter, but the best stuff happens there. <laughs> mm. Saturday is when Jesus did battle with death, death itself, and he conquered it. Saturday is when Jesus laid to rest for all time the question of who wins. He wins. Jesus mm. wins. Mm. So maybe this is a season of grace. One more reason for us to come to the cross. Don't rush too quickly past Good Friday and Saturday. Come to the cross. Lay down before Jesus. Shed the dead stuff one more time. That's the only good reason to celebrate Easter. Mm. <laughs> there, it, Easter is good for one thing and one thing only. To harness the power of the resurrection so we can shed the old life and bring on the new. Mm. Mm. When we trust in Sunday 
friends, we're really trusting in Saturday mm. too. Mm. Listen to this from Paul. He says this in Romans chapter 6. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We're no longer slaves to sin. For mm. when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death mm. no longer has any power over him. Mm. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin. You've mm. shed that old life mm. and alive to God, pulsing with the life of God through Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. a powerful word. That is a great word. That's a great word. And, and you know, what I love about that is just the reality that mm -hmm. that kind of death is a vulnerable thing. Yeah. It is really putting your life, your very self in God's right. hands but from a place of faith that says, I really do believe in resurrection power. Right. You, you know, when God called me here to Mosaic, he gave me John 10, 17. It was a real key verse. And he said, uh, as Jesus speaking, he says, the father loves me because I lay my life down mm -hmm. only to take it back up again. Yeah. And so, so it's just that confidence that God, whatever we lay down, God will resurrect and redeem yeah. in such a powerful way. Yeah. And you know what I love? Is that it's built that that concept is mm. built into the very fiber of the, I mean every the fabric of the world mm. into every cell of yep. nature. Absolutely. So the whole death and resurrection thing built into the tarantula's body. The whole yep. death and resurrection thing built into the into the seasons that we experience. Yep. Um, it's it's built. It's the cocoon coming into a butterfly. Absolutely. The, the whole story of I mean creation cries out redemption, yep. and so. You know, the season we're in with the, yeah. the you know, we're, we're dealing with this virus right now. It is such a strong reminder, reminder to us. We live in a fallen world. Yes. And even though fallenness has pervaded every cell of humankind, Jesus Christ is slowly redeeming every single cell. And yeah. one day we will live back on the other side of Genesis 3. Uh, amen. And, and, and Get excited. Come on, Chris. That's it. And, and <laughs> what's so interesting to me, it says the dead in Christ yes. shall live. Yes. So let's make sure, brothers and sisters, that in this corona malaise that we're walking through, yeah. that we allow there to be a death in Christ yeah. so that Christ can redeem all, yes. so that Christ can bring resurrection yes. power into this. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Right? Amen. So on Saturday... Uh, when you feel, when you truly feel the space between the crucifixion and the resurrection, mm. I want you to hear two things. First of all, God, what God is there. Mm. God is in that space between the death and the resurrection, and God is doing his best work in that space, Amen. redeeming everything that breeds life, in, I mean, that breeds death in us. And second, make it, let it make you hungry for the one thing that Easter is good for, and that is the proclamation that Christ wins. Let's Amen. pray. Jesus, you win. Yes, you win. <laughs> but we don't want to run too quickly from the cross to the empty tomb. So I pray, God, for my friends that we will all, I pray that we will all use these next uh, 48, 72 hours mm. to really examine ourselves and leave in the tomb everything that belongs to the culture of Egypt so we can take from there everything that belongs to the kingdom of God. Mm. We love, honor, and worship you, Jesus, and we thank you for the work you did on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Be blessed.